Naomi. Hey, is that some more thunder? Maybe we will get some more rain. And what could we have here? Hi, sweetheart. Hi, sweetheart. Do you see yourself? Huh? This is Style. And her lamb. This is... Come here, sweetie. Come here, copy. And back here is Malala, which is a mouthful. And so I've just been calling her Mala. And her two boys, they're Weathers. And that's Tag and Twister. And you can't see. There's one more you back in the corner. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. You're very handsome. Hi, sweetheart. Come here. There's my girl. There's my girl. So I have a lot to catch you guys up on in the next episode. Thank you for visiting. Aren't you handsome? Come here, Copy. Yeah, we need some more water, don't we? We need some more water, don't we, honey? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Oh, doesn't that feel good? So on Thursday morning, I filled the car with gas, packed my overnight bag, thermos of coffee, and hit the road and headed north from my home in Elma, which is about the middle of the Lower Peninsula, and just started traveling. I headed north and north and north some more till I was as far north in the Lower Peninsula as I could be and came to Mackinac Bridge, which if you don't know about Mackinac Bridge, um, it would be interesting to you maybe to Google it. It's a five mile long suspension bridge connecting the lower peninsula of Michigan with the upper peninsula and uh, over the big lakes. And it's quite an experience to drive over. I didn't take pictures of it because the day I traveled over, it was raining and misty and foggy. It was really quite hard to see and didn't want to stand out in the rain, so I didn't take any photos of it this trip. But you can certainly Google it. So I crossed Mackinac Bridge, and then I took Highway 2 across the Upper Peninsula, going west, and that goes along the lake shore, the whole distance, and that's a two-lane road, and across, still going west, till finally I could head north a bit, and west again a bit, to the town of Marquette, I went around the outskirts to Nagani, and that is where my friend's sheep farm is at. And let me tell you, it was an adventurous two days to pick up those sheep and bring them back home.
No, your eyes are not deceiving you. You're seeing Shetland sheep at Serenity Farms. Hi, my name is Carrie, and this is My Wool Mitten, my podcast about my life on a small sheep farm in the middle of the mitten. You might be wondering why Shetland sheep, and why now, when my heart and passion so obviously belong to the Coradale flock that I have. Well, first of all, let me say that the Coradales are not going anywhere. They'll always be my first love. But unless I can find a breeding ram, the flock that I have won't be expanding anytime soon. And I can talk about that in another episode. I've actually already talked about it. Um, if you've followed me for very long, you've heard me talk about it before. But enter Shetlands. And not just any Shetlands, but fine wooled Shetlands. In the shades of black and gray that I love, and only a few right now, I'm not planning on becoming a big time breeder or looking to be an expert in the breed. There are plenty of people around already doing a great job at that. And I might mention a few of them that have inspired me here. That would be Jen and Rich Johnson of Whispering Pine Shetlands. A wealth of information. Um, they have a YouTube channel here. And if you don't already, go and subscribe. You'll really learn a lot. Rachel at Barkland Croft in Fair Isle and her postcard from the island and her adorable Shetland sheep. Uh, my friend Stephanie from Condors Croft and Garden. Um, she used to have Crafty Garden podcast and her love for Shetland wool and the breed and she and her husband have just recently started a small flock of Shetlands. And so um, go and find her podcast and subscribe. And then, of course, my friend Karen Valley of Winter Sky Shetlands at Bright Angel Farm in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, who is the breeder of these sheep. And Karen has been a champion of fine wool Shetlands for many, many years. So I'm thrilled to have some of her animals here on the farm. I wanted Shetlands for their fleece, for their size, for their thriftiness, Less feed, less space, and yes, that wool. Um, I've been a consumer of, of Shetland for the fleece and the wool for as long as I've been spinning and knitting. And now I have my own little flock. I've got big plans for this little flock of mine, and I'll tell you more about that soon, probably in the next, excuse me, next episode. But for now, I just wanted to introduce them to you to adult use a yearling and a two-year-old and three lambs and there will be a ram coming later this summer. So welcome the Shetlands. Are you surprised? Do you have any questions for me about them? I wish you could see there. They are not afraid of the cows. <laughs> this is the first day that there's been much activity with these guys the first couple of days there was really no running and playing it was like grass consume that was it but it's also a little cooler today and i may have mentioned it before but i i don't want you to think that nala came to me nala came to me too thin she is really nursing those two boys down so <laughs> they're enjoying themselves something else interesting with the Shetlands when they came out here like I said this is a little overgrown so I wasn't too worried about them getting you know a lot of fresh young growth but there were quite a few dandelions out you know that were big enough to have uh, flowers on them and they went through and ate those yellow flowers off the top of the dandelions. Pretty much right, just right across the little lot here. I'm so peeved, you guys. I was getting some 
wonderful video this morning with no wind, or at least it looked like it was good video, only to realize that my phone was doing some update and had shut itself off. So anyway, we're back and we'll try this again. See the cattle up there watching the sheep? Gonna zoom in just a little bit. So I thought I might uh, mention, you might be wondering why I'm taking such time getting this new flock out on grass. They came from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, about eight hours north of me, north and northwest of me. And that's a whole nother um, zone up there as far as weather and climate. In fact, they've just had snow come off not that long ago. And so there wasn't any grass yet. So these guys were still on hay. And so of course we don't wanna put them through the stress of moving and shipping and then turn them out onto a bunch of grass and risk any you know, any problems that way. So even though they're very hardy sheep, we just wanna be careful. So what I've been doing is giving them hay in the morning, let them get filled up with some good dry hay and then come down and turn them out. It started with an hour, and then worked up to an hour twice a day, and then a couple of hours, and then yesterday I had them out for about five hours. The other thing that's a little bit of a difficulty is I wouldn't like to turn them out onto such wet grass, because then not only you know do you have um, feed with a lot of moisture in it, but then with the grass that just adds to it. So I, I gave them quite a bit of hay this morning, and I'll watch a little bit, maybe won't leave them out quite so long. So, so that's what we're doing there. And this, this is actually, this is kind of yard. This is down the hill coming into the barn where we usually would back a trailer or whatever. And I just had fenced that off and it, you can see I'd let it grow a little bit taller. So it's not young, fresh growth. And that will help a little bit too. And so far, no loose stool, no bloating, anything like that. The cattle will be leaving here shortly, um, making their way to freezer camp, and then we're not going to have cattle again. And that's, that's part of my change in plans, so we'll talk about that a little bit at another time. Let me swing the camera a little bit to the lambs. I'm so bummed because the film I got this morning, they were actually running and playing, which they hadn't, they haven't done a lot of. But it's very cool this morning, and they're probably feeling pretty peppy from having all that grass yesterday. Peppy has a little piece of straw kept to her tail. I like how square built and smooth he is. Compare him to the twins. Of course, he's getting all the milk of being a single, but they're a lot more fine boned, quite refined, a little longer legged, a little longer bodied too. And I like that square built. Lazy Corydales are enjoying the sun. They've just come in from their morning graze. And here's the little flock of Shetlands. They're ready to go out on the grass this morning. Had their hay. I can't believe they've been here a week already. Oh, you're not so hungry this morning, huh? Our goal for today is to get the um, coats changed on these guys, especially Susan. Hers is tight and check the fleece, see if she's gonna roo or can be shorn. Hey guys, enjoy your day today. Kyle and Celine are over here on their pasture too. How style. <laughs> 